welcome back. Today we're going to talk about zoysia mites, or maybe mites in general. But I wanted to give you a shot of the yard and a quick update on a couple spots before we do it. So here's the front yard. Looking, looking pretty decent for not irrigating in 10 days. And here we have had uh, 90 plus degree temperatures for probably three weeks, like every day with the exception of a day or two. Um, fairly decent amount of rain to go with it. So the front yard is looking pretty fantastic. I don't know if the camera is showing up as well as it looks, but um, <clears throat> I did uh, notice some compaction issues yesterday and I thought to myself what would be the best uh, way to fix that. And my short term answer was let's aerate. Um, so I pulled the aerator behind pretty decent, uh, pretty heavy in the compacted areas where my zero turn has been um, riding a lot on specific tire tracks. But I did the whole yard. I hit those uh, common areas pretty heavily and uh, I went to my supplier and he was completely out of sand because I was going to top dress and fill those holes in with a little bit of sand. So I said, you know what, forget it. I went ahead and aerated. I threw down a bag of the X Green 818 because I'm due for a shot of fertilizer. And I had a bag of X Soil. So I threw that out as well. Um, but one problem I'm having over here on my side yard is uh, a dry patch. Um, where else? There is right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. That has been a chronic dry patch now for a few weeks. Now my whole yard has been treated with hydrotain. Well, almost the whole yard, not quite all of it. But this section has, and the hydrotain has worked fantastically. But I've had that spot right there has been a chronic dry spot year in and year out. I can go put an hour's worth of irrigation on that spot and in a day or two, it will look like that again. So I might have some underlying issues that I'm not real sure what they are. Um, so did the aeration. I took my bagger system here on my zero turn. I went down a notch and tried to suck up my cores that popped up. And basically I got, I don't know, probably three quarters of those two bagger fools of dirt that it sucked up. So now I need to sharpen my blades on my mower. And I don't really cut with the mower. It's more for a yard cleanup. And I might take a eighth of an inch um, off the top of the grass when I do it. But um, normally I clean up the yard. I've had tons of leaves, pine cones, pine straw. And then I normally go over the front and the sides with the real mower. But um, over the past few weeks I have been mowing the backyard with the zero turn. Um, the front yard is regulated with a growth regulator. The backyard is not. And um, I can definitely tell a growth difference between the two, but both are actively growing and they're doing really well. I spent a few bucks on some mulch, finally put it in this bed here. But, I mean, the yard looks good. I mean, it's pretty tight. It looks even better from the road when you're not up on top of it. Over here where my chronic dry spot is that I told you about, and underneath these four pine trees, year in and year out, this is one of the dry spots in my yard. And it is due to the trees. So I may make another application of the hydrotain, but we have a lot of rain in our forecast. Um, and the temperatures on the extended forecast seem to be going down so it looks like today is supposed to be 96 and um, we're going to be in the upper 80s for the next 10 days after today with the hurricane moving in Monday night and Tuesday so within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours so I'm trying to figure out what I need to do here to eliminate my problems under these trees it is compacted you can definitely see my tire tracks um, when I edge right here 
this tire is always here when I cut the edge of the sidewalk uh, driveway my tire is here and then when I make my center pass I'm hitting both those tire tracks yet again but I aerated the crap out of it the ground was a little bit hard but the tines did dig um, a half an inch or so here's some of the debris that my mower did not suck up so I'm getting that deep anyway let's go take a look at this zoysia mite problem you can definitely see how thick the backyard is that is not regulated this line here is where I've been pulling some zoysia plugs for customers I just have not backfilled those holes yet. We're going to come back here to a spot. I pre-treated uh, a week ago 1,000 square feet to see if uh, it would damage the lawn. And it looks great. But I'm going to show you some damage spots. I don't know if you can see this right here. But you get a curl in the leaf blade you get uh, stri styration I don't know how to say it striation of the leaf blade that yellow or white streak that goes up the leaf blade and it tends to flop over so basically I have patches of this throughout the lawn mainly in the backyard which is weird because the entire backyard came from plugs that came out of the front yard now I do have a couple of small spots in the front yard that have been affected uh, mainly on the ditch bank and in one little area on the corner of the yard so I'm gonna spot treat what I see in the front and I'm gonna blanket treat the entire backyard only due to the amount of active ingredient that I have. Um, I'm going to put up a graphic here for you of some pictures I took and let you see some of the mite damage that I took pictures of. And also, we're going to talk about what we're going to use to treat the mites. Now, a mite is a microscopic member of the arachnid family or if it's not in that family it closely resembles arachnids I think they're four legs I don't remember it doesn't matter but what they do is they they're microscopic so you have to have a scope um, take your plant tissue uh, put it under the scope and look down at the base and you'll be able to see a microscopic type worm is what it looks like and I did that my neighbor is a, uh, basically a farmer and he has that stuff because he runs a test farm and anyway we saw one the symptoms uh, were verified by a couple other people that I trust and classic mite damage symptoms so what I have to treat is abamectin you can use um, Lambda Silothrin, uh, Delta Mex, not Delta Mextrin, what is it? It's, it's something else, I don't remember. But I chose Abamectin due to the cost of it. And I was advised to use a horticulture oil. And what that is, is a, an oil that you mix with the active ingredient. And what it does is, especially this time of year, when your plants have a thicker wax, waxy cuticle that you have to penetrate, uh, this horticultural oil will help penetrate that and get this active ingredient into the plant where you can better use its systemic properties. And what that means is, systemic means you get certain chemicals of pesticides, insecticides, um, and herbicides into the plant it works by getting into the plant not just a contact uh, her, uh, 
chemical. Contact means it just has to touch it to kill it or to be effective. Systemic means it has to be absorbed into the plant. And in this case, the pest that we are treating has suckers and he he sticks his suckers right into the uh, the shaft and the leaf blade of the plant, sucks his juices, releases a chemical into the plant. The plant responds by looking the way it does. More than likely, we won't have any severe damage from mites, but the cultivar that I grow is quite susceptible to this mite damage. So we're just gonna go ahead and treat it. The other thing that we want to consider is the life cycle of the mite. And I think the life cycle is roughly five days. So you can kill the adult mites and within a day or two, you're gonna have, um, the, the eggs will hatch and you'll have new mites and it's a very fast life cycle. So I think a couple of treatments back to back, you know, seven day treatments and we should have these guys pretty much knocked out. If not, we're just gonna have to keep going until we do get them knocked out. I gave my plug trays a haircut yesterday, and um, all of this is Tiff Blair Centipede, so I'm growing this for the first time. I had to trim it, it was like four inches tall. Hadn't been planted a month. And these behind me have been planted for about two weeks. Those are the month, those are the two weeks. This right here is Zenith. Zoysia, and if we pick out a plug, we're looking good on our roots here. Just watered them this morning, gave them a haircut. But I'm wondering what kind of disease I had here in this spot because last year it filled in, and at the end of the year, it kind of got thin and died off. And I've thrown a few plugs, some El Toro plugs, in there. And uh, those plugs look like they're doing fine. But I'm wondering if I had mite damage up here. I also have another spot that um, I'm suspicious of. But you can see how it, it looks really bad through here. And then it just transitions into a nice yard. So, not real sure. There's the egg soil that I put out today. Actually last night. And the X green for my weekly application of fertilizer. All right, here's what we're using today. The All Seasons Horticultural Spray Oil is an emulsified mineral oil, which emulsified means that when you mix it with water, the water and the oil does not separate. What this will do is it will allow the the active ingredient to penetrate the waxy cuticle of the plant that way it can get into the plant and into the system of the plant and is why they call it a systemic herb, uh, insecticide or miticide now what we have is Timectin this is an off brand of like the Avid product but it has the active ingredient of Abamectin and we're gonna apply one and a half ounces of this per thousand square feet. It doesn't matter how much water you use, that needs to go out at an ounce and a half, probably in a gallon or two per thousand square feet. The spray oil needs to go out at a half of an ounce per gallon of carrier. And you would use one to two gallons of carrier per thousand square feet. So we'll get these mixed up in the right ratio and get it ready to apply. Now one of the um, restrictions on the spray oil is not to apply the spray oil in temperatures greater than 90 degrees or less than 40 degrees. Now I applied a test area a week ago and it was 90 degrees out, but I did it in the evening I had no problems whatsoever, no bad effects from the spray oil. I've decided that I'm going to tackle this dry spot right now, and I'm going to have to wait until late this evening before I apply um, 
the abamectin and the horticultural oil. So, I gotta wait for it to cool down. In the meantime, my ADD caught up with me and I got the oil changed in my four wheeler. I got the blade sharpened on my lawn mower. Now I'm gonna put some stuff down on these dry spots. So what I'm doing is watering this area for about an hour, just getting it good and wet. Then I'm gonna let it sit for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna mix up some Dethatch, Air 8, RGS, Hydratane, and something called Lawn Aquifer, made by Aqua Aid, and uh, they're a local company to me that have a lot of great products. But I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and apply it. I probably mix up two gallons of carrier on top of whatever I put in it, and I'm just gonna apply it to everything that the sprinkler's been hitting for about 30 or 45 minutes. And once I apply this, I put the sprinkler back on it for another 45 minutes or so and get it pushed down into the uh, root zone so that most of these products can become more effective. That's how I'm gonna knock out this dry spot. All right, I ended up with two and a half or three gallons and I just sprayed it all inside where the sprinkler was hitting and uh, I'm gonna let this get watered in and I'll move over one more section closer to the road and hit that part right there and call this good. Let's move on to the mites. All right, I made a command decision. So I treated my dry spots with um, Air 8, RGS, uh, the, the stuff I showed you earlier in the video. I watered it, applied it, and then watered it in again. Now. I'm due to spray this miticide with the horticulture oil and I think I'm going to add a super low rate of propiconazole and a little bit of azoxystrobin as a preventative measure for fungus but um, I had a little leaf spot earlier in the summer and I just feel like a small dose of those two fungicides will just help prevent anything else from happening. We are expecting a hurricane in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours, three to six inches of rain. So with that in the forecast, what my plan is right now, I'm running an application of Humic 12 at the six ounce rate, RGS at the six ounce rate, the uh, Subvert MFT at three quarters of an ounce per thousand. I don't think I added anything else. I can't remember. I think that's all I put in there. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit the whole yard with that. And then we will apply the miticide, horticulture oil, propiconazole, and azoxystrobin um, in the next hour or so as it's starting to get dark. But I had to wait for the heat to subside a little bit before I applied the horticulture oil. It has a recommendation not to apply it in temperatures over 90 so that's what I was trying to avoid but I'm gonna get the humic <clears throat> the RGS and the MFT out on the yard since we're expecting this rain I don't care if it doesn't get watered in until 24 hours it doesn't matter it'll sit there it's not going anywhere so I want to get that in the ground then we're gonna hit our miticide and um, We'll follow up on this video on those mite spots um, and see how it looks. All right, we just wrapped up uh, an ounce and a half rate of the abamectin, one half ounce of the horticulture oil per gallon of carrier. I also did 0.2 ounces of propiconazole and I think it was 0.3 or 0.4 ounces of azoxystrobin, I can't remember which. But I wrote it down, so that was our miticide application. We'll come back to it um, in a couple weeks and see if the symptomatic spots have disappeared. And um, that was our second application for the day. The first application was a six ounce rate of Humic 12 and a six ounce rate of RGS and a three quarter ounce rate of subvert MFT so the yard is really really holding up to the drought stress 
with the exception of this spot here behind me. But man, look at that color. Look at my color compared to my neighbors. That is crazy. Just give you a quick shot, evening shot of, uh, of the yard. Looks really good. The front is uh, regulated with T-Nex at a 0.2 ounce rate uh, about every 400 growing degree days. The back is not regulated. It is cut with a rotary mower at two and a half inches. The front's cut at one and a half with a real mower. So it's pretty tight. It looks really good. I don't know if the camera's showing it up, but there are no blemishes in the yard except for the, uh, the dog hair that I pulled out of the dog while ago. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, hit me up. If I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you. Until next time, I'll catch you later.